Hey guys, Crux117 here, and today I'm going to talk about the Xbox One. Um, I've had the whole weekend with the console now, so I want to give you guys my impressions, both good and bad. So uh, yeah, here we go. Let's start off with the bad. Um, so when I first got the console, booted it up. It took a good minute or more to boot up the first time, and then I got to a screen where it showed the controller on the screen and it prompted me to press the A button which I did and then the console froze and did nothing for like several minutes I just sat there and waited nothing happened kept trying to press A nothing happened so I reluctantly restarted my console and then got the same prompt again and it worked just fine so uh yeah there's definitely been some a, a few minor hiccups for me with the Xbox One but uh, nothing too bad overall. Uh, after that, I went to installing games. Something you guys should know about that is uh, for some reason it installs the updates for the games before it actually starts installing the game. So depending on your internet speeds, uh, you could be sitting there a while before it even hits 1% on the, on the install. Which kind of threw me off guard and I kind of thought things were going wrong when I first started trying to install a game. So I again restarted my console while I was at re while I was installing games and stuff, which I, I don't recommend. But uh, yeah, if you're patient and you just sit there and wait, I know it seems like it takes a while to install, but once it gets going, it goes pretty quick. So yeah, that's just something else you guys need to know. Um, I did have one issue while installing a game while I was installing Call of Duty Ghosts, where the uh, while I was installing it, it would stop installing in queue and then start installing again, then stop, and queue. And it was just weird, so I ended up having to restart my console for that, which fixed it. And one other issue I had was, the other night, me and a friend went to play Killer Instinct, and every time I booted up the game, it went back to the home screen. So I ended up having to uninstall Killer Instinct and reinstall it. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, uh... Sucks having issues with consoles, but it is expected when they launch. The launch units are, as many of us know, faulty a lot of the times. So I remember when I got my launch 360, I, I had that thing red ring on me probably four times, I think. I had to send it back to Microsoft. So, uh, yeah, um, the issues I've had with the Xbox One are nothing like that. Uh, I did finally upgrade my 360 to the Elite. I think it came out like a year after, and... Then I had that Elite up until this year, so uh, Xbox figured it out pretty quick the first time. Luckily, this time it doesn't seem like there's any too bad issues. Um, I am, I do feel lucky that I didn't experience anything like the discs issues, the disc drive failure that a lot of people have been uh, talking about. So uh, yeah, I feel lucky I haven't experienced anything like that. And, um, yeah, just like I said. Launch hardware, you gotta expect some issues. That's kind of one of the things you gotta expect when you're an early adopter. Uh, same thing happened with PS4. A lot of those consoles were bricked or whatever. They had a lot of issues too. So, uh, yeah. So that's pretty much all the bad experience if I've had with my Xbox One. I feel like I've been pretty lucky. Um, even though my sister hasn't had any of these issues, as what I've seen. She also got an Xbox One, so maybe I'm not quite as lucky as her. But, uh, still lucky. It works. Been playing games. So, uh, yeah, let's move on to some of the more positive stuff. Alright, so let's talk about the UI, um, or user interface. It's pretty similar to what we saw on 360. This time there's only, like, three screens, so, um, there's, you got your pins, your home screen, and the store, which is kind of it, and, uh, I don't know, I don't know if I, I haven't decided if I like it as much as the 360 one, or if I like it better, or if I don't like it as much, I don't know, it's kind of weird, I mean, everything's still there, I kind of miss having the friends tab now, you just got a friends app, which is a pretty good app, uh, you can see what all your friends' recent activity has been and stuff, which is pretty cool, um, but yeah, the UI itself is very Windows 8 looking, um, a lot of little squares and pins and all kinds of stuff um 
you can customize the color of your uh, of your tabs and stuff in your profile settings, which is, I thought was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys know, it's kind of like the Windows 8 Metro style start screen. It's pretty much what it looks like. So if you guys know what that looks like, you'll have an idea of what Windows or what a <laughs> Xbox One UI is. Um, pretty simple. Uh, I guess one of the biggest thing about the Xbox UI that we really need to talk about now is the Connect. And uh, so there's a lot of controversy with Microsoft having to put the Connect bundled in with every console. Giving it that extra one hundred dollar price tag over uh, Sony's PS4, a lot of people were upset about that, and there's been lots of controversy about it. Watching you or listening to you and all this stuff. Um, and while I wasn't always the biggest Connect advocate, I really wasn't looking forward to playing any games with it. But having Connect to to work the Xbox One UI is, in my opinion, almost mandatory. Um, the way they set it up. And I've really been enjoying it, actually. Um, the Connect this time, uh, I would say that it recognizes about eighty percent when I say. So there's a lot of voice commands. It does take a while to get used to, like using Connect to to move around the UI. Um, there's a lot of things like like when you say Xbox, it pulls up a menu. But if you want to be able to select what's on the menu, you got to learn that. You got to say Xbox Select, and then it'll bring up everything you could say, and you got to say exactly what it is on the screen, blah, blah, blah. Um, it takes probably a good 10, 20 minutes to get used to just navigating with the Connect with your voice. But uh, after you get used to it, it's pretty good. I actually like it. And there would be some features that you couldn't even do without the Connect. So, uh, just like say you're playing a game and you want to say you do something cool and you're like oh i want to record that and you just say xbox record that and it records the last 30 seconds which i think is a pretty cool feature i've used it a lot and there's no button that you could just press to do that which maybe be a design in the or a flaw in the design but uh without connect you can't do that you can't just press a button and have it record the last 30 seconds you have to be able to say xbox record that so so things like that you actually really need the Connect for, and I've really been enjoying using the Connect. I'll be honest, I like how how it'll sign me in automatically. I like being able to say Xbox on and it turns on the TV and everything, which you guys need to know that you have to go into the TV settings to get to do that. So uh, if, if you don't think it's working for you, just go into those settings, it'll work. So I thought that's a pretty cool feature. I've just really been enjoying Connect overall. Like I said, a lot of people have had have been saying that they the voice commands don't really work and they have to repeat themselves three four times. Uh, I would say that for me, like I said, it works about eighty percent of the time as long as you're not in a super loud room or someone's blasting TV like I am sometimes. It uh it works pretty good. I've really been enjoying using that. As far as using Connect for games, haven't really done much of that. I played like one race and connect sports rivals way racing it was pretty fun but i mean it's not something i would really get into but uh yeah i'd say overall on the ui user interface the whole design and layout of the console i i would say it's good it's nothing great nothing not a huge drastic move up from the xbox 360's ui but uh but i, I enjoy it and i i can't wait to see how it evolves over time just like the 360's ui did all right, next up, I want to talk about games. Um, I'm sure as you've been seeing, I've been playing lots of games over the last few days. Uh, I waited to play a lot of the the multi-platform games for the Xbox One. I didn't play any of them last gen on the Xbox 360 or PS3. So I've been waiting a, a while to play some of these games like Call of Duty and Battlefield and Assassin's Creed. So I just want to go over real quick. I'm not going to really go in depth on the games, but... Uh, as far as Call of Duty and Battlefield go, they're Call of Duty and Battlefield, so you guys know what to expect there. They're just as good as their previous installments, and in, in some areas a little bit better, so it's been pretty fun. Graphically, Call of Duty didn't, I wouldn't say, it had as much as an improvement over last gen as Battlefield did, but it still looks good, looks clean, um, runs at a solid frame rate, so I'm happy with Call of Duty. Really been enjoying playing Ghosts, and Battlefield has 
had some uh, glitches and stuff, but graphically it looks amazing and the maps are just huge and it's been running pretty good. I would, they say it runs at 60 frames per second, but I'm pretty sure that a lot of times it doesn't because <laughs> it chugs at some stages in the games, but uh, it's been pretty fun to play nonetheless. Um, Assassin's Creed, uh, I've enjoyed for the most part most of the Assassin's Creed games. I uh, wasn't a big fan of 3. But four seems really good. I'm really impressed so far. I really like in the the setting and the characters and uh yeah, it's been really fun to play. I like I like uh steering the boat and having pirate ship battles and stuff. It's been pretty awesome. Um yeah, I haven't really got much into that. My sister actually got in that game, so I've just been playing her version of her copy of the game, but uh so that's where I'm playing that. But uh as far as graphically, that really doesn't improve much over the last gen either. Just a few, like, bush physics effects and stuff like that. And the lighting's a little bit better. And some of the texture quality's a little better. But nothing, like I said, a huge improvement. Um, That's what I really want to talk about. Forza 5 and Rise. Uh, Rise is a beautiful game and a good show-off of the console. But that is pretty much it. Um... If you want to imagine playing it, it's like the taking the combat of Assassin's Creed, and then that's just the whole game. There's none of that other stuff that's fun in Assassin's Creed. It's just the combat over and over and over again, and that's pretty much what the game is. Um, we'll say it's fun, and through the first few levels, it I really enjoyed playing it, and uh, the 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 kill animations are awesome. Um, it's really bloody and brutal and i just really enjoyed it for a little bit but it does get old as a lot of the reviews say um and then i played online a little bit and that was fun but uh i do wish there was split screens so i could play with some of my friends who haven't gotten xbox ones yet it's kind of unfortunate there isn't but uh the arena battles are pretty fun and that i mean the games it's not a great game i'm not saying i wouldn't recommend anyone go out and buy it unless you just want that one game that's going to be a showcase because it is the best looking next gen game that i've seen uh it really does just look good but but uh yeah other than that it's not a whole lot going for it the story's not bad but uh not a whole lot of uh replayability and not, I, don't, I can't really recommend anyone spending 60 bucks on it but I just want it as a showcase so uh, for that I have been impressed and pleased and last but not least 4 to 5 well, I guess not last because there's still Killer Instinct um, 4 to 5 is amazing I've been, pl I've been loving driving games ever since I was given Gran Turismo 2 when I was a kid for my birthday randomly I was kind of like, eh, what's this game? But, uh, it really, that game really got me into loving cars. And at that age, I knew more about cars than most people who were adults. And I was like probably 12, 13. So, uh, yeah, it was, it's been pretty fun. So I was really looking forward to Forza 5 and it has delivered. I love it. The graphics are amazing. It runs at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Looks so good. Um... Yeah, um, I really like the drive guitar system. That's where they kind of, they use the cloud to watch you race. And then after a few races, it makes you a drive guitar, which then goes out into the Xbox Live and lets other people race your drive guitar, which is just kind of like an AI that kind of customized to the way you drive and some of your, the things you do. And for some reason, the Xbox just turned on randomly. <laughs> that was weird. But, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, Drive Guitar's been really fun. I like um just being in races and seeing some of my friends drive guitars in there. It's it really makes it more enjoyable to me. And uh the graphics are amazing. The that it really the Xbox One's controller, which I haven't talked about in this video, really sticks out in that game with the rumble triggers. Um they just feel really good in that game especially. I haven't noticed it in any other game. I'm not sure if they're even in any of the other games, but uh the triggers just feel awesome in that game. Having the feedback when your tires are kind of spinning or you're kind of losing control. It's really awesome. I've really been enjoying Forts 5 and, uh, yeah. Oh, and Killer Instinct is awesome. I've been waiting for that game for a long time. Uh, I used to love playing it on Super Nintendo and it's glad to, I'm glad to have it back. Um, 
I don't really much say there. There's only six characters so far. It's a fighting game. Yeah, it's fun. And last but not least, uh, one of the things we want to talk about with the Xbox One is its DVR functionalities. Um, this has been something that the new consoles have been touting for a while. I've been excited. Um, so I'm going to go over the way it works with Xbox One and some of the things I think they can improve on it. Um, so yeah, it's got a built-in game DVR. It's got two apps that work with it. One's called Upload. One's called Upload Studios. Now through Upload, that's where all your game clips are saved. And the way you record is one of two different ways. So you can either, before you start your game, tell the Xbox to snap the game DVR, which it'll snap it to the side. That's something I didn't talk about earlier. Probably should have um, the ability to snap other apps while playing games or watching TV or whatever, or even snap your TV while playing games. It's just ability, kind of like Windows 8 has, where you can snap two things at once. Pretty cool. Works pretty good. So yeah, that's one way you can record. Snap the game DVR in, start playing your game, and you can record there up to five minutes. And then the other way is while you're playing the game, you don't have to have it snapped. You can just say Xbox record that if something cool happens. And it'll record the last 30 seconds. Now, a lot of games, I guess there's a third way. A lot of games are built to record automatically at random points, which is kind of weird. Like, I was playing Rise the other day, and it just kept popping up saying, Game Clip record, recorded, out, and I don't really know why. Um, Battlefield 4 kind of seems to record a clip every time you uh, rank up. And I think some games are set to record every time you get an achievement. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but uh, pretty cool feature nonetheless um so yeah so then you go into upload and you got your game clips there and then you go into upload studios and you can edit your game clips you can put voiceover or record video for picture in picture of you with through the connect so uh that's been pretty f cool um and yeah so basically the way it works you record game clip go into upload studios edit it if you want and then you can upload your clip to SkyDrive, which is Microsoft's cloud service. And then from there, like I can get SkyDrive on my phone so I can upload straight to YouTube from there, or you can get it on your computer, download the clip through your SkyDrive, and then edit the vid video as you normally would, and then upload it to YouTube. Um, now some things I would like to see improved. Um, mainly, it, it would be nice just to be able to upload to YouTube straight from the console. Um, it's not hard to do SkyDrive, so at least there's an option there. It's better than PS4's options, as far as I've heard. Um, and then, secondly, let you record more than five minutes. Now, you can keep recording game clips, but when you have apps snapped, it's kind of a pain to switch back and forth between them. And, uh, yeah, if you're in the middle of a multiplayer match and you see that the clip stopped recording, it's kind of a pain to have to try to hit record again. So, uh... Yeah, that's one. That's probably the main thing they need to fix as far as it comes with a uh, game DVR on the console. Um, other things they could fix is just letting you record your voice or video of yourself while you're recording the game, rather than later in Upload Studios. That would be kind of nice. And uh, yeah, like I said, just being able to upload to YouTube, they fix those things. It would be awesome. I mean, at least bump it up to like fifteen, twenty minutes record time would be a vast improvement. But uh. Other thing I want to talk about with Xbox One is that they do, at launch, let you use capture cards or PVRs or whatever. So you can record that way as well, which is much easier. And you can record as long as you want that way. In the normal way you would with any other game console. So if you got a PVR, nothing to worry about. You don't have to worry about trying to use Upload Studios. And that brings me to one of my favorite features I found out with the Xbox One. Um... So it's got an HDMI in, which is meant for you to use with your cable box so you can watch TV through your Xbox. Now, me being a person that doesn't really watch live TV that much, didn't really think that was going to be much help to me. What I happened to find out, though, is I can plug my PC into my HDMI in port and control my PC through my Xbox One, which has been really, really helpful and awesome, and I'm so glad that feature's in there. Um... <clears throat> Excuse me. So the way that works is through the TV part of your Xbox One, 
your computer will show up or whatever you plug in HDMI. You can plug in a Wii U, PS4, whatever you want. It'll show up too there. Um, but for me, what really helps is plug my PC in because then I can, on the one console, I can control my recording with my PVR while I'm playing games. I can snap in the TV to the upper right and watch it recording and check on it. And it's just been made it really easy. I don't have to keep, since I have my Xbox One set, set up at my computer desk through the monitor, it keeps me from having to keep switch inputs or switching out core HDMI cables and stuff. It just made it really simple. And that is a really cool feature that I love. Um, I'm so glad it's in there. And I, that's one of the main things I've been enjoying about the console, I think. It's just that, that one feature. Uh, it is, there is like a few millisecond lag in it. So it wouldn't really be good for like playing games. Um, I see that that would get pretty annoying pretty quick and... Yeah, especially games that which take a fast uh, trigger finger or quick reflexes in like a platform and stuff. It wouldn't really work out that well. It's not much of a lag; like it's just a just a split little millisecond or so. But uh, it would be enough to throw you off. So it's not really good for gaming. Wouldn't really want to like PC game through your Xbox One. I mean, you could some games probably, but not really meant for that. It's meant for TV. But I just thought that was a cool feature. I let you guys know about it. But uh. Yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Um, I think overall, I'm just saying that I really love the new console. Uh, a lot of cool features. A lot of good games. Really been enjoying it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I would expect to see more gameplay footage soon. I'm going to keep trying to update you guys on the Xbox One. And I haven't forgot about you PC guys. I know my channel started off from... Uh, <clears throat> kind of started off with the whole PC building and stuff and I still want to do that just because I got this Xbox doesn't mean I'm done PC gaming that's definitely not the case in fact I just played Elder Scrolls Online beta this weekend but I can't really talk about that all because I'm under NDA about it which is unfortunate but uh yeah so uh still PC gaming still loving my PC and um yeah that's why I'd expect more of that soon too hopefully and uh yeah that's about it Thanks for watching, guys. If you don't have Xbox One and you've been thinking about it, I would say go ahead and get it. If you got a PS4, probably don't really need one. Overall, the console is pretty similar, and um, I'm sure you would enjoy your experience on either one. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.